I sometimes read uh, public domain books here on Leaves of Glen. And they were written a long time ago, uh, so they're usually uh, racist or sexist or bigoted. Uh, but in there somewhere and all that is a, a story, and that's why those stories are famous. Other times, I read uh, works from independent authors, and they're delightfully not racist, but they might have adult language or adult situations. So that's your warning, uh, but I'm sure you uh, are grown up enough to handle it. Don't write to me complaining. God, that was horrible. I feel like I'm covered in bees. Oh, hello. Uh, welcome to the mansion of Leaves of Glen. It's a fun little bit where I pretend to record from different rooms in a giant mansion, when in reality, I'm just uh, recording from my basement. This is where I read the hottest public domain books and short stories. Uh, this week, we're going to read A Mate, Not a Meal by Serena Dory from her book, Won't You Be My Neighbor, which was published on March 18th, uh, 2021. About the author, well, Sarita Dory has sold over 170 short stories to markets like Analog, uh, Daily Science Fiction, uh, Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction, Orson Scott Card's uh, IGMS, Cosmos, and The Abyss and Apex. Her stories and published novels have won humor contests and Romance Writer of America awards. Uh, she has over 50 novels published, including her best-selling series, Wombie's School for Wayward Witches. You can find out more, uh, along with more of her work, at serenadori.com and sign up for her newsletter to learn more about new releases and free offers. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Uh, fun facts? Uh, I've said this before. I don't have that many fun facts from Serena. Maybe I should email her and say, Do you got any more fun facts? I'm reading the same stuff over and over. Uh, by day, Serena is a public school art teacher, artist, belly dance performer, and instructor, uh, copy editor, fashion designer, event organizer, and probably a few other things, but by night, she writes. A few of her favorite things include gluten-free brownies, not necessarily gluten-free, Star Trek, steampunk aesthetics, fairies, Severus Snape, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, and uh, Mr. Darcy. Well, what I did before doing this was... Uh, knocked down a wasp nest that was uh, growing right outside my garage. It's not very big. It's small. It's about the size of a cookie. Uh, so they're just getting started. And I realized, oh, God, I got to knock that thing down. I could try and spray it. But after reading uh, Serena Dory's books about bugs, bugs with feelings, I have a hard time just killing them and spraying it. So instead, I thought what I'll do is I'll wait till nighttime and I'll knock the thing off the wall uh, and it'll land on the ground, and then I'll just run for my life and get back in my house. Uh, that'll give them a chance to grab their little baby sacks and fly away uh, to make another nest in somebody else's garage. So, that's what I just did, and my skin is still crawling. I popped the thing off with a real long stick and dropped the stick and ran for my dear life to get out of there. Because uh, I don't want to get stung and die. And so now I'm in the house, convinced I got things crawling all over me. Uh, it's a horrible feeling, but uh, it's not going to stop me from doing this show. Well, since Grandfather Clock hasn't gone off yet, and I still have to keep talking, uh, I'll tell you about my wedding outfit. Next weekend, I have to go to the guy who does my tattoos. He's getting married, so I'm going to go to his wedding. Uh, apparently, I'm part of the wedding party which I wasn't prepared for, and uh, there's some rules around that and breakfasts I got to go to and stuff, which I didn't really know about, and so now I've committed an entire day to uh, doing this. My oldest decided to help me dress up, because it's not really like a required outfit. We're not wearing tuxedos and stuff. Tattoo guy dresses really cool, probably like a lot of flames and stuff on his outfits, so I was like, yeah, poop. What am I going to wear? I'm not going to wear flames in my outfits. I'm not, gonna, I'm not as cool as this guy. Uh, so my oldest took me shopping. We found a jacket that's corduroy that's got elbow pads, and we built the entire thing around that. So now the theme of my outfit is I'm a 1970s uh, literary professor at a community college, down to the fact that I'm going to carry a copy of Catcher in the Rye in my jacket pocket, which I thought's hilarious because it's kind of pretentious. The kind of teacher that says, you know what, I, I, know a, I know a guy who also thought that a bunch of people were phonies. Uh, why don't you read this? And so, yeah, I'm going to have that copy with me. And I'll just keep talking about uh, phonies 
uh, how no one, you know, how you, sometimes you, no one understands you, that kind of thing. And then he asked me to be the DJ, which means I have to get up there. Uh, apparently they got like a playlist. It's just a Bluetooth speaker kind of thing. But I meant to get up there and be like, uh, it's DJ Elbow Pads, uh, let's get wet, and then turn on the beats. Well, with that, why don't we uh, dive into this story? A mate. Not a meal. Uh, Mom always said uh, one could never be too careful when trying to capture a maid in her web if only she had listened to her own advice. Male arachnopedes are tricky. If he's an imposter from another tribe, he'll sing you sweet songs and claim his love is true love. Uh, but then he'll trap and eat you, she sang uh, to my sisters and uh, me when we were hatchlings. She used all her legs to play a complicated song on her web to communicate certain combinations of notes representing words. Well, I danced on the web with my eight perfect legs, trying to move like mama. I accidentally twanged a discordant note. Uh, she fixed all 12 of her eyes on me. Uh, Mal Malatina. Well, I'm probably not saying that name right. Pay attention. This is important. A worthy mate is hard to catch, and it can be dangerous if you misjudge his intentions. Well, I was only weeks old, but already I knew there was nothing I wanted more than to leave home like Mama had and start a family of my own. I imagined what it would be like when I had captured a mate of my own. My sisters departed one by one over the following months, and I grew bigger and stronger, and, and, and my outsides felt tight and too small. Yeah, I wanted to climb out of the hole in the ceiling of the cave and fly away in the wind like my sisters, but I felt sluggish and heavy. Now I lost my appetite and didn't feel like singing, even when Mama tried to coax me. Well, you, you need to bolt again before you can go off in the world, Mama said. Well, there was a sadness to her music, like she missed me, even though I was right there beside her. Uh, Clervia and I were the only ones who had yet left the cave. And she needed to bolt, too. We stuck ourselves to the web next to each other and lay on our backs so our outer shells could stay in place as we shrugged our way out. It was a vulnerable position, but Mama was there to watch over us. I, uh, I, 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 I folded my legs inward toward my abdomen and uh, pushed my body away from me. I accidentally uh, clicked Clavia. Uh, watch it, she said, and she kicked me back. And now, and now you watch it. I kicked her again, this time on purpose. Mama shook the web in exasperation. Uh, behave or I'll feed you uh, to one of the ground walkers. What's a, what's a ground walker? I asked. Uh, something that walks on the ground. Uh, Duh, Clavia said. Uh, the ground walkers have been invading our territory and they can shoot venom made of lightning out of their hands. Mama pointed to a scar in her abdomen. And that's how I came by this. Perhaps those tall and slender creatures, with only four legs and had been ground walkers, uh, I'd seen them that time uh, when I tried to leave my home. If Clavia had jumped on my back and weighed me down, uh, the wind would have caught the strand of silk from my spinnerets and ferried me away. As soon as you're done uh, uh, malting, uh, you'll need to leave our cave or else. Uh, one of you is going to... Have to eat the other, Mama said. And she added a chorus of, Eat the other, and eat the other, and eat the other. I would never eat my sister. This had to be one of Mama's little jokes. A spasm of pain lanced through my limbs. I wriggled and arched my body, so absorbed in the task of molting, I, I hardly noticed the new song. At first, I just thought it was another of Mama's lullabies. One so soothing, it made me want to stop what I was doing in sleep. The voice that accompanied the strumming sounded like it was a, uh, like it was made of nectar. Look, uh, a, a male, Clavia said. And I wanted to ask her how she knew. Uh, she had never seen one, but the intensity of the cramp in my legs stole my voice. I, I couldn't sing or, or play music to say anything back, and then I saw him for myself. Oh, he wasn't light gray like we were. Uh, at least I didn't think so. Uh, but it was hard to tell from our angle. 
I stretched across the doorway, framed by the soft glow of the moons. And dewdrops clung to his hair of his legs and caught the light reflecting a, a million miniature moons. His legs were delicate and smaller than ours. Oh, he was so beautiful. Tentatively, he crawled a few lengths down the wall. His abdomen shimmered purple and blue. My gaze was riveted on his glowing uh, pedipalps. <laughs> he waggled them suggestively, and a new sensation washed over me, something warm and pleasant I couldn't explain. Well, he was uh, twice as big as I was, but uh, still only half a mama size. I couldn't imagine why mama had gone to such lengths to tell us how dangerous a male could be. Oh, she could crush him in her jaw. Now, not that I, I think she would want to harm such a, such a handsome creature. Ah, uh, he plucked at the highest ladder of silk ropes. His song was simple, but perfectly on key. Love me, love me, ah, love me, he said. The music vibrated down to the ropes that held me and, and pulsed through my very being. A, a shiver ran through me. Uh, it, 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 it was love at first note. Uh, the air smelled sweet with this perfume of flower, nectar, and musky earth. Uh, Clavia was just as enamored, apparently. She, she wriggled her head out of her empty shell and sang along to his song. Her voice was raspy, and the way she plucked the strings in their half-molted state was, uh, was off-key and jarring after his perfect pitch and tone. I may have accidentally wha uh, whacked her with a half-empty leg as I waggled out of my own shell. His notes reminded me of that time I had poked my head outside in bright daylight and had been blinded. Oh, there's my cat. Great, get lost. Go find something else to do. I'm recording a podcast. Long green stalks swayed above me, but I couldn't make out anything in the overpowering sunlight. I had the sense that the world was a much bigger place, uh, but it was too beautiful to behold. This voice was like that, so beautiful it left me senseless. Uh, Mama struck the silk chords in a complex song I'd never heard. Uh, if you love me, how will you show me? Will you sing to me until dawn and promise to never leave my side? Tell me I am your universe and you are mine, she repeated words uh, every so often to accompany her strumming. He imitated her song, adding stanzas of his own. Mama clapped her pinchers together in pleasure. Clavia tried to draw his attention. Uh, what, what about me? You love me? Uh, gimme, gimme! Her music was so inelegant, it hurt my head. I, I wanted to chomp down on her with my fangs to put an end to her, her horrible music. Oh, I felt bad after I thought it. Uh, maybe Mama had been right about why my sisters and I needed to go our separate ways. The male tilted his head and uh, studied her with his eight eyes. He didn't have 12, li uh, 12 eyes like us. Uh, venom dripped from his fangs and uh, yeah, onto his Chelleracy Jaws. Oh, boy. I should look that one up. I have no idea how to pronounce that one. Chelleracy. Chelleracy. Okay. It's either a pair of appendages in the front mouth in arachnids and some other anthropods. Wow, she really did her research on this. And must have uh, thought she was a tasty morsel rather than an arachnopede. I didn't blame him when her music was as disgusting as aphid droppings. Watch and learn, Mama said, but not over here. Mama grabbed onto us with two of her legs and tore the delicate lace the webs had uh, pulled us free. Uh, she crawled down the ladder of the central web to a little shelf that jutted out in the cavern wall. She, she thrust us between the silk cords and, and into the ledge before hastily patching up the web and uh, turning back to the male. The male and Mama circled each other. Oh, playing songs for hours. Oh, the music didn't vibrate through me now that I was uh, no longer on the web, but I could still hear how pleasant it was. Oh, she played and danced as she, as she sat on the web, and he tucked his uh, uh, pedipalps under himself and curled up like, a, like he was about to molt. Mama had told us about this ritual. Now, I couldn't see if, uh, if he transferred anything from his belly to his petty pal, but I assumed he must have when he, when he uncurled. He would sacrifice his own petty palp as they mated uh, so that she could have their babies. 
Oh, it's so romantic. I couldn't wait to see how this worked. Oh, Mama approached him, and he scurried backwards, and she started up her song again and let him approach her. And, and she was patient and kept her movement slow and, and, and small so that she wouldn't scare him away. And if I had been her, I would have snatched him up so he couldn't escape. <laughs> but, but I suppose I had to learn patience if I wanted to lay an egg sack someday. She must have made him feel safe because she... He let her come closer and closer. She arched her thorax upward, and he climbed under her belly. It was a great view to watch from below. She plucked out uh, two simple notes that she could reach from her position. A molting spasm shook me, and I, I wiggled further out of my shell. My attention focused on cracking the hard outer body around my new soft one so that I could, I could push it off. Uh, my sister twitched and kicked me, and I kicked it back. A discordant note twanged from above. Uh, Mama screeched and shuddered, and her two back pairs of legs were bound together with silk. The male's fangs sank into her belly, and she tried to shake them off, but he held on to her with his petty pelt and wrapped his legs around her abdomen. Oh, she rolled down the web, momentarily sticking before crashing into the wall. Uh, he held her fast, uh, her legs twitched, and uh, she kicked out, uh, but not with as much effort as before. Uh, Mama, get up, I said. Uh, he isn't a uh, mate. He's an imposter male. My voice was a small, raspy creak without the aid of music. I trembled in horror. I wanted to turn away, but I was stuck in my shell. My eyes gazed upward. Mama stopped moving. The imposter mate bit the other pieces under her abdomen and her legs, injecting venom as he did so. If his venom was as potent as ours, it, it, would, uh, it would take a day uh, before her insides liquefied. Uh, then again, his venom might be quicker. Uh, his had petrified her more quickly than ours did. My molting would take hours more, and I would be stuck watching them all that time. I felt hot and sick. Uh, he'd set it down, the central rep toward us, and, and I was too weak to do more than wiggle. Clavio was uh, farther along than I was, and she had uh, made it halfway out of her shell. Her head was pale and yellow instead of, uh, instead of gray, and the bald of the fur... Uh, that would keep her from sticking to the web. Uh, she kicked her legs and pushed herself out of her old body more frantically. Uh, I, uh, he hovered above Clavia and he uh, clacked his chisel array. I'm never going to know how to say that word, so I'm just giving up. Uh, chisel, chisel array. I'm going with that. That's officially how I pronounce it from now on, and as far as you're concerned, it is the correct pronunciation. Jaws together and waved his petty palps ominously. Another molting contraction seized her, and her legs curled inward. She was easy prey. She was so small and vulnerable. I, I couldn't bear to watch. I I move, I told her, and she floundered, and more of her shell cracked. But she couldn't get uh, full control of her legs yet. Uh, they were still inside the exoskeleton. I kicked at her, trying to push her from the shelf and onto the ground below. She rocked back and forth, but uh, didn't fall. Uh, he reached through the ropes of the web, and I wrenched one leg free of my molted shell and batted his leg away. Uh, over here, I sang. Uh, look at me. And he ignored me. Oh, he pulled her through the hole in the web and into his embrace. Clavia, I cried. And he crunched through her shell and tore it away. She screeched and kicked out frantically with her pale limbs, but she was so weak. She looked like a baby in his arms. His fangs flashed in the light and tore through her soft yellow skin. He, he licked at her blood and bit her again uh, and again. A spasm seized me and I curled into myself. Pushing a little more of that exoskeleton off me in the process, and when the pain cleared from my head, two legs were free. The, the male uh, struck my little sister, uh, stuck my little sister to the web above uh, to save her for later. Venom dripped from his fangs as he descended toward me. I tried to squirm away, but I was weak from molting, and my shell was heavy around my lower half. I, I was only partway out of my old body. He poked a long leg through the web and grabbed onto my molted shell with one of his claws. Oh, he dragged me closer, and I used the two legs fully out of my exoskeleton to dig into the dirt shelf and keep myself from getting closer. Oh, he thrust his mouth through the gaps of the web. Something crunched, but I couldn't feel it. He, he pulled back. A piece of my old abdomen fell from his, uh, ch chicalera, chicalera. Don't you criticize me. He clawed at the shell around me and shook it. 
which helped me uh, more than it helped him. I managed to squeeze out of my shell a little more. Uh, I might have gotten away, but he shoved more of my molten shell into his jaws and chomped down harder. Pain blossomed in my back limbs as he yanked back. I fell out of my shell and off on the ledge, landing in a pile of the brittle exoskeletons of former meals on the floor. I writhed and tried to keep to myself, uh, but I fell off balance. He kept reaching for me through the web, but I dug myself under the drained remains of bodies and hid. Instinctively, I curled in on myself and, and licked my injured limbs. There were two craters at the base of my thorax where he had ripped my legs out. Uh, the next set of legs were stumps, halfway gone. I covered my uh, legs with a protective coating of saliva uh, and silk thread. And my movements were awkward without the use of my, my back legs to help me, and spinning bandages hurt as much as it helped. Oh, he waited on the web above, and I sank lower onto the bodies, covering myself so he didn't, couldn't see me. Pain blossomed through me with each movement and made me shudder anew. I was giving away where I was. Uh, he strutted back and forth on the lattice that separated us, uh, tested the silk for weakness, as I'd seen my mother do, only he wasn't about to make repairs. Uh, when he found none, he sang to me, Oh, come on, little one, a uh, pretty one. I have a penny pound for you. And he sang with a nectar in his voice. Oh, he plucked on the strings on the web, lulling me into a trance. Uh, I moved my two feet in time with his notes as though I were uh, playing the web. I stopped myself when I realized what he was doing. Uh, I wouldn't let myself fall under his spell. I wouldn't trust him, nor any other males. He played music until he grew tired. Uh, my sister's body was still young and, and soft. It only took another hour before he sucked out her liquefied muscle. Uh, when there was nothing left, he tipped the dried husk of her body through the web and she fell next to me with a crunch. I turned away, not wanting to see her like this. I, I wanted to remember her as she had been, giggling when I tickled her. He sawed at the threads of the web nearest to me with his, with his, with his fangs, venom dripping. And I wondered why uh, he didn't just cut it with his claws like Mama used to when he was rearranging the pattern of the web. I witnessed his ability to cling tightly with his claws, but it, uh, it appeared they weren't good for cutting. It took him forever to saw through one strand, and he stopped several times to rest. Uh, he waited another day before eating Mama, and I buried myself as deep as I could to try to drown out the sound of him slurping. Oh, he plucked at the web idly with a leg. Slurp, twang, twang, slurp, twang, twang. It was, he was toying with me, marking the moment of, of his feast with a song of torment, uh, just to torment me. I, I hated him. I wanted to crawl up there and bite him on his belly while he was preoccupied. But there was, uh, there was no way I could crawl up the web without him feeling the vibration, nor did I think I could crawl with only four legs. His, his abdomen was bloated, and his exoskeleton looked so close to bursting, I thought he might molt. Uh, then I'd have my chance at him when he was at his weakest. Instead, uh, he sang. Oh, his notes were lazy and languid. He didn't put much effort at uh, uh, trying to seduce me out of hiding. I'll have you yet, uh, <laughs> my little pet. Uh, next time, I'll catch you in my net, he sang as he left out uh, the hole in the ceiling. Never again would I want a mate. I had to make sure no male ever came to me again. I needed a door across the entrance to seal myself in. I labored through each step. My movements were unbalanced, and I, I teetered back and forth. Oh, several times I fell as I tried to run threads of silk across the hole. Uh, I used so much thread, nothing could get in. Not even food at first. That left me hungry and even weaker. I, I snapped some of my cords and widened the hole to, uh, to, so thrip mites might fly in. Uh, I grew and bolted again. Uh, two of my legs were still gone, but there were no longer craters in my body. Uh, I now had longer stumps, uh, though they were still too short and lacked claws. Uh, perhaps another molting and they would grow back. These longer stumps uh, helped with balance at least, even if they weren't much good for grasping. I had to break away more webbing from the door as I grew to allow bigger food inside. I, I called them with the songs my mother had taught me. Uh, when a male arachnopede came, a small one that was pure white with 12 black eyes, he sang in a 
different dialect and I could hardly understand. Oh, he, he sweetly, sharp scent reminded me of the first male. My mind flashed the memory of him sinking his fangs into my mother. My insides chilled and my legs itched uh, to run away. Love me, kiss me, hold me, the new male sang. His notes were off, he didn't fool me. I made my notes discordant and pounced at him. I always skittered away and left, and he didn't come back. Afterward, I thought I should have been more subtle. If I had coaxed him inside, I, I, I could have eaten him. As it was, my legs shook all over, and I felt as though my venom had dried up. I didn't know what was wrong with me. Uh, the rainy season came and went, uh, flooding my cavern and then draining away. The ground shuddered, and the larger species of arachnopedes hunted at night. Uh, I sang songs to my prey and went on as normally as I could, though I had to modify my music since I could no longer dance across my web to strike the right notes. I made smaller webs uh, within leg's reach, positioning myself so I wouldn't topple backwards as I played with one front leg instead of uh, two or four. I could only think of my sister and my mother. That could have been me, and I wish it had been me. My life felt so empty that I considered ignoring food uh, that fell into the new web I had woven. But as soon as my tasty morsel dropped down, my instincts took over and I couldn't stop myself from pouncing. I am a traitor. I should join them, I sang to myself. Uh, no one answered my song. I didn't expect anyone to. My heart felt heavier with each day that passed, and I longed for companionship. But I didn't want a mate. I wanted Clarvia, and I wanted Mama. I was so desperate for companionship, I sang to the thrip mites and to the beetle fours uh, stuck to my web. My mother had said not to play with my food, but she never said not to, not to play to my food. They didn't appreciate music, though. Uh, they buzzed and flopped around in panic. Uh, only arachnopedes were intelligent enough to sing. One day, as sunlight spilled down from the hole at the top of the cavern, and distant music vibrated through the walls along my web. The song was faint, uh, but then I traveled closer to the ceiling. Uh, I could hear the music more distinctly. The low notes captured my own sorrow so completely I was enraptured. I couldn't understand the words. It had to be a different speaking of arachnopede, but it wasn't some male seeking a meal under the pretense of a mate. Uh, this was someone so overcome by loneliness, he barely had the will to live. He, he was like me. I climbed closer to the door, hungry for more. Yeah, I was too bright to see outside, uh, and I was too large to fit my body through the hole without tearing through uh, the packed earth. Uh, by the time the music ended, uh, some of the darkness uh, from my heart had lifted. I... I still lacked four limbs, but I felt more whole than I had in a long time. I was only sorry the music had stopped. The following day, when the sun rose, the music came again. The male arachnopede expressed such emotion in each note I could resonate his pain. And when the song ended, my claws itched to play in response. Yet, if I did, he would come to my cavern. Oh, I couldn't protect myself if, I, if he tried to eat me, and surely he would. I wasn't his species. If I were, we would have spoken the same language. With each day that I heard the male sad music, my longing grew more intense. Oh, I paced across my web, teetering ungracefully as I fought to keep my balance. My seclusion and solitariness suffocated me, and I wasn't meant to be alone. I suffered through my pining until I could stand it no more. A season of bottled-up love songs burst out of me flowing through my legs and into my claws where I struck the chords. My combination of notes made up words, and in those words I communicated my own heartfelt desolation and longing. I sang as I played, hey, You're a lonely heart seeking a mate up above, and I'm a lonely heart below seeking my true love. I sang it several times, and then I waited in silence. A moment later... My reply came, an echo of my own song. Uh, the first time he repeated it, the words were garbled and not quite on key, and I, and I played it again, and the next time he repeated it, exactly. I had made contact with a male, and he had responded. I only hoped it wouldn't be my undoing. Each morning, shortly after the sun rose, the male serenaded me with music. Sometimes I repeated songs, and sometimes he repeated mine. 
It thrilled me and frightened me when he sat above the hole to my home and his music was closest. Uh, several times uh, I thought he might come down and he stood over my entrance so that he blocked out the sunlight. I ached to feel his notes played on my web and vibrate through my body as they were meant to be felt. Oh, my body longed for his touch. All I could think of were his petty palps running under my belly to impregnate me. Surely this pining was hurt so much it had to be what my mother had experienced, the, the kind of overpowering distraction that made females risk everything. I had thought I would never want to mate again, but I was willing to risk being eaten rather than to live without his music. I had to have him. I played more softly to lure him down, and I sang quieter, and I told him I was dying, dying for his love. Even if he didn't understand my words, I hoped he would understand my meaning. Oh, it took weeks of courtship before he entered my cavern. He descended into an unusually thick strand of silk. It intrigued me that he threw down the cord before he descended. He, he used his upper legs uh, uh, to shimmy himself down awkwardly and uh, held the silk with his lower legs uh, rather than spinning the thread from his uh, spinneret as he lowered himself. Uh, as he neared, I could see why he moved so ungracefully, and again this gave me pause. He had only four legs, like me. No wonder the sorrow of his sweet songs mirrored mine. I stayed back in the shadows under my web. He was big for a male, and this made me wary. He was uh, still smaller than I was, but uh, not by very much. Uh, he touched his head, and a glowing eye opened. He swept a ray of light along the wall and over my web. Uh, when his lower legs came in contact with my web, he tried to shake the silk off like a, an antivore or, or, or thrip gnat might, but the stickiness of the web held fast. He shook himself so violently he fell into the central web, angled so his body was uh, more or less upright, uh, though at an incline. His four legs kicked wildly. He twanged on the strands of silk unharmoniously, and he made screeching sounds that hurt my ears. Uh, the acrid aroma of fear filled the air. Uh, if I hadn't known he could produce such beautiful music, I would have thought uh, he's a misshapen antivor or octopillar. As soon as he stopped fighting and silenced, I was able to hear the faint percussion thrumming inside him. It made a pleasant ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. Now, and I stepped into a place where I might be noticed, though I remained far enough back as not to en endanger either of us. I plucked at a note of introduction on my web. Uh, hello, my music sang. My future mate said nothing. Only looked around, the light of his eye moving this way and that as he tried to find me. I repeated myself several times. Uh, when at last the brightness of his gaze uh, found me, I was temporarily blind. Uh, though not deaf to the intensity of his newfound struggles. Uh, maybe he thought I was going to eat him, and I waited again for him to stop fighting. Uh, hoping to soothe him, I played our song. You are a lonely heart seeking a mate up above, and I am a lonely heart below seeking my true love. The baboom rhythm beating inside him slowed. A strange little squeak came out of his mouth, and he touched the web experimentally with one of his claws at the end of his limbs. It twanged. He stroked a different section, and then another, until the claws at the end of his front legs became stuck. I shook myself to show him my dismay at his ignorance. Even arachnopedes, only a few days old, could spot the stickiest places on the webs. Slowly, like I was teaching a child, I lowered my petty palp toward the strand of silk and, and touched the tips against the string. And I, I pointed to the sticky part and then the smooth part that was safe to grasp and then, and then play music. Oh, he learned quicker than most my sisters and, and had used the hard tips of his claws to pluck the notes with his one free leg. He played music so he couldn't be prey, and yet he didn't understand anything about arachnopedes. If he were a hatchling, he might be from one of the larger sister tribes of arachnopedes who lived above. Uh, this theory didn't explain uh, what had happened to his other legs. I would have suspected that he was a groundwalker, but Mama had once said they were stupid and easy prey. Uh, this creature hadn't been easy to lure down here. Oh, he tested the strings before playing. It wasn't the same complexity of music he'd played before, but he wasn't in such a state of panic, at least. After a moment of testing the notes on the web, he repeated my song back to me, or as close as he could manage, with the limited range of his reach. And as he played, 
Uh, his last free limb got stuck on a sticky cord of silk and he was completely trapped. Well, I ventured closer, intending to free him, uh, but he screeched and struggled, and uh, the beat of his internal music thrummed more quickly. I smelled warm and delicious traces of nectar perfumed his skin, and I, and I caught earthly notes of, uh, of cow worm uh, and, and octopillar, and I didn't know if I wanted to eat him or to mate with him. I teetered up the lattice until I was right beside him. His ear-piercing screeches grew louder than ever. Uh, males could be so overdramatic when mating. At least that's, uh, that's what Mama used to say. I spat on the place uh, that the cord touched his skin on the upper limbs, and his flesh was smooth, uh, like a cowworm. Oh, and his legs, his legs lacked the, the thick hair that would have kept him from sticking to the strands. The only part of him... That didn't stick was his head, where the long black hair sprouted. He squirmed enough. He didn't need any help from me, rubbing my saliva against the cords, and was able to free his two legs. I backed away and gave him more room. He calmed and tentatively started up in song. He played my web until his upper leg, or perhaps it was a, a petty palp, got stuck again. I suppose the way he was positioned on his back wasn't the most advantageous for playing music. Uh, if I freed him, though, uh, he might escape. Or worse yet, he might eat me. And uh, I thought of my mother and sister and shook myself. Hoping for a compromise, I decided that I would place him in a safer place. I started by tearing a hole in the web, and I spat on the webbing that held the round bulge of his back and, and rubbed at it with my claws uh, to free him. I held tight as I lowered him through the hole, but he was heavy, even if he was my size. He wiggled so much, I dropped him. Unfortunately, the, the pile of exoskeletons and my molted remains below broke his fall. Uh, he kicked them away and waded through the crusts of former meals toward the lowest silk cords that he could reach. I was amazed at how graceful he was on two legs, using his upper legs to test the notes. I played our song, and he played it back to me, running back and forth to pluck the right notes. He occasionally, uh, well, twanged off-key, but I could see he was trying. Things were, were going very well, considering he hadn't tried to eat me. Only uh, when I tried to ask questions about himself, he repeated my question instead of answering. Uh, when I answered, he repeated that as well, and he didn't understand anything. My heart sank. So much for having a mate to listen to me and converse with. Maybe he was an imposter mate, uh, like the one that had eaten my mother. He pointed to his abdomen and said, Sophia. Oh, Sophia. He had a nice melody. I repeated the gesture and sang the rhythm. He, he shook himself, which I took to be disgust at my ignorance. He pointed to himself and sang the three-note rhythm. Then he pointed to me. And I understood then, and I pointed at him and sang the three notes that represented his name, Sophia. I then pointed to my abdomen, Melatna. He chittered and clapped his claws. Oh, I clapped my... Uh, my, my Kisore, that's the pronunciation of that, jaws together. He pointed uh, with his front claws at my web and looked at me uh, as if waiting. And I played the note for web, and he mimicked. He emphasized the notes incorrectly, making the word sound like uh, boo instead of web. Uh, but it was a start. He proved to be a quick learner, better than I had been as a hatchling. He pointed to the hole above, the walls, my food, and anything else he could find, learning which notes represented the words he wished to use. The tangible words were easiest, the things we could uh, point to. Words like love, or fall, or why took a lot more trial and error. Even then, I wasn't sure he understood. I watched in amazement as he removed part of his back, and he held some kind of shell with a long neck and a, a peculiar webbing that ran in parallel lines. Uh, he plucked the correct notes to play my name and his, as well as other words he'd learned. Of course, he also added in a bunch of his own garbled words. It didn't make any sense. Uh, it was my first happy song I had heard from him. I plucked notes to accompany him. It felt eh, alien eh, being happy, eh, but I liked it all the same. I quickly learned there was more to having a mate than singing. Uh, he had to eat. I offered him the most succulent morsels. He shook his head in his long hairs and swished back and forth. Uh, he pointed to the hole of the light above, and I pretended I didn't understand and played another song. He slept below the web, and I rested high above where he couldn't climb. He turned away, and then I ate and refused all food I gave him. And on that second day, uh, his music wasn't uh, quite as harmonious. Uh, he repeatedly pointed to the hole. 
He clutched at his abdomen in pain and rocked back and forth, and, and I played and danced across the web. Yeah, <laughs> but the music guy didn't sue them. I plucked at the strings of the web uh, to ask, uh, Hungry? Looking at him made me ravenous. I wasn't certain that if that uh, was a normal and mating. Uh, then again, dancing across my web to reach the right notes uh, in almost a continual song was a lot of work, especially with only four legs uh, instead of eight. And it made sense I would be hungry. He pointed to his abdomen. A low, discordant note came from his mouth. And he played the word for hungry. The slow cadence of his tune sounded more sad than hungry, and he played on his own little web from his back. Uh, why, Melania? Uh, Xeropad Sophia? I could hear the question, but couldn't tell what he was asking right away. Uh, I had to slowly decode each of his words and pantomime the meaning to see if I understood. Once I realized what he was saying, I, I helped him play correctly. Why has Melania captured Sophia? Uh, he asked. Sophia has captured Melania's heart uh, with his songs. I gestured in the hope of my meaning would be clear. He repeated the words, but they still weren't quite right, and I kept at it until he sang the words correctly. I didn't know if he understood. Uh, Sophia homo. He pointed to the hole in the ceiling. I played that word over and over and helped him play it correctly and now understood uh, now to say home. I remembered how I had once been trapped under my mother's web with a male on the other side. Uh, perhaps he feared I would eat him. It broke my heart to let him go, but I didn't see any other way. Uh, if I didn't allow him to escape, he would surely just die. Yet, if I freed him, uh, I might be putting my own safety in jeopardy. Uh, Sophia up. Sophia hungry. Uh, Sophia home, he played, and then pointed to the hole in the light above. I hung my head in sorrow. Sophia, go home. He couldn't climb out without sticking to the web, uh, which meant I had to carry him. And if I did so, he might sink his fangs into my belly. Uh, my best option was to wait until he was asleep. Uh, I sawed through sections of my web and tore away smaller ones uh, that might hinder him along his way to the city. Uh, next, I spun a basket with my spinnerets that I was able to attach to my posterior <laughs> using a, a line of silk so that there was uh, ample room between us. And as soon as I dropped him into it, he began to thrash. I had to hold my web with all four of my legs until it calmed. Uh, when I started ascending again, he must have caught on because he stayed still. The closer we came to the door in the ceiling, the more I feared what might happen next. I pulled on the thread to bring him closer, and his skin smelled of a, of a sweet, sour deliciousness that made me hungry. His eternal beat pounded louder than ever. I spat on the places he was attached to the basket. He didn't try to move away as I freed him, nor did he jump at me. Uh, he climbed the rest of the way up to the hole, using his thick thread he'd come down by. His limbs shook, and he had difficulty lifting himself and I pushed under his thorax to lift him higher. It seemed to help. He scrambled out of the hole. I sang him one last song of farewell, and I hoped he might give me one parting song. There was only silence. Two days later, I was startled to hear Sophia's music from above. Oh, he sang at my entrance, shining down a, a bright ray of light with his eye. But, but he didn't descend. Uh, this time, he, he teased me with his music. All my dance across the web to play the right notes were clumsy, and I stumbled to keep up with him. Not that he saw, uh, we made beautiful music together for hours, and how could he not be lured into my embrace? Oh, he played me a song, mostly getting the order of the notes correct to make words. I'm Landia below and Sophia above. Uh, Minkag, uh, web music to Shaho to hear love. Making web music, I corrected, to show their love. He played until he got it right, and I moved on to the next line that needed work. It took time and patience to reinforce his lessons in my language, when all I wanted was for him to return to me. For days I endured his repetitions of simple words and simple songs, which I, uh, most of them uh, were unromantic and uh, 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 childish. I did my best to redirect our music to something more suitable for courtship. I played and sang, Join me, join me, join me, you'll be forever mine. Sing to me, sing to me, sing to me, and I'll be forever thine. Love me, love me, love me. In courtship we will shine. Mate with me, mate with me, mate with me. 
I no longer wish to pine. My persistence paid off. When Sophia next ascended into my cavern, he lowered himself using two ropes this time. Later, he called this a, a pulley and showed me how it worked. He, he avoided touching the sticky strands on smaller webs, and he passed on his way to the central web. Uh, and when he did, he used a, a hairy part on his arms that I hadn't noticed before. Uh, the hump on his back was bigger than ever, and I waited in one corner of the web. He stayed a little ways above me, suspended in the air, and it appeared he had uh, stuck his lower half through a sort of basket so that he could hang there. He removed the miniature web from his back and played our most recent song. I played with him, wondering if he would mate with me this time. Uh, when we ceased playing, he took something else from his back, a metallic box. Uh, he pushed on it, and our song echoed back to us. I stared in awe. He was playing uh, uh, w without playing it was a kind of it was a kind of magic as our song echoed back to us and he plucked up new notes on his miniature web a, a different conversation he layered over the top of it I, I stuck my leg against the web in a discordant note. no I said uh, too much noise he waved his claws in the air stopped the magic song box and started again and I shook myself and turned away in disgust. This was not how music was made. One song was communicated at once, uh, and on the rare occasion when there were two, uh, we played the same melody. Still, I was intrigued as I listened. His, his counter-harmony wasn't aesthetically unpleasant. If anything, it, it enhanced the first song. It, it was hard to listen to all the words at once, but I wasn't sure I needed to. I understood the joy... And sorrow, he expressed, even if I couldn't catch every word. And half his words were nonsense anyway. Maybe he was trying to communicate that he felt multiple things at once. He played the music again, this time the magic box echoing back the first and second song at once, and he added in one more riff. Oh, I joined in, carried away by the beauty and strangeness of this courtship, and at, at this rate... Uh, he was never going to fertilize me. Then again, I doubted any other female arachnopede had enjoyed this kind of companionship and music before. I didn't need children if I had him. With time, Sophia became better at uh, using music to communicate. I became better at counter melodies uh, played simultaneously with his music. Uh, with the ability to understand each other also came disappointment. Why won't you fertilize me? I sang. I don't have the right to equipment. You still speak rubbish words. Talk properly. Uh, where, are you, where are your petty palps? I asked in song. They break off mating with other females? He replied in refrain, what are, what are petty palps? Petty palps? Surely this was coyness. Why don't you fertilize me? I, I'm not male. What are you then, female? Yeah, don't you understand now? My insides felt as though they were being torn in two. I didn't want it to be true. Hey, you can't be female. You're too small. Are you, are you a hatchling? No, I'm fully grown. My notes twanged more sharply than I intended. Now you can't be female. Only males roam without a home. Now I have a home. It's above. You can't be female. You fit through my doorway. Wind whistled out of his mouth. I'm female. I fit through many doorways. I played without rest, not allowing him a chance to reply. You can't be female. I love you. You can't be female. Why, why do you come here if you didn't want to be, if you didn't want a mate? You can't be female. Uh, how will I find a mate if I've already fallen in love with your music? My notes died away into silence. Sophia shifted uncomfortably in the basket. Uh, we could be friends. Uh, we could both love music. Isn't that enough? And I shook my legs in disgust and turned away. Some actions spoke louder than song. Well, with that, why don't we slip into the master bedroom where we can learn about the latest romance novels coming from Penguin Random House Books. Oh! You didn't even get changed. You just came up here, but I beat you to it. I was sitting here in the room, waiting for you. Watching. Quietly, silently, just sitting here, waiting. And once you walk through the door, you didn't have time to change. Doesn't matter. Uh, this week, we're going to learn about 
Uh, Miss Lattimore's Letter by Suzanne Allen. About Miss Lattimore's Letter, ah, the woman who never made a match of her own is making matches for everyone else in this hilarious Regency-era comedy of manners. Uh, Safrina Lattimore had her romantic dreams destroyed years ago and is resigned to her role as chaperone eh, for her cousin, gross. Still, she cannot sit idly by uh, when she becomes aware that a gentleman is about to propose to the wrong woman. Oh, she sends him an anonymous letter that is soon the talk of the town, particularly when her advice proves to be, uh, to be correct. Uh, her identity is discovered, and Sophie, formerly a wallflower, becomes sought after for her, quote, expert, unquote, matchmaking skills. One person who seeks her out is the eligible and attractive Sir Edmund Winslow. As Sophie assists Sir Edmund in his pursuit of a wife, she wishes she could recommend herself in italics as her bride. Uh, however, she vows to remain uninvolved while aiding him in his search, in parentheses, especially since the gentleman surely does not return his her affections. Uh, but when her long-lost love, Sir Edmund, both seems to be interested in courting her, uh, Sophie can't figure out if she's headed for another broken heart or for the altar. Uh, how can she be expected to help other people sort out their romantic lives uh, when her own is such a disaster? Well, that's interesting. Uh, that's coming out August 10th. Uh, did we already pass that? It feels like that we're behind the times there. It feels like August 10th is already... I don't have my phone or my watch in front of me. I don't have no idea what the date is today. What is the date today? Oh, it's the 7th. Oh, you still got time. Ah, oh, you got time. It's 16 bucks in paperback at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Hudson Booksellers, IndieBound, Powell's Target, my favorite name, Books A Million, uh, Bookshop.org, and Walmart. Oh, well, that was fun. Uh, uh, what are you, mad? What, because I beat you up here and you couldn't change into sexy clothes for the romance section of this uh, podcast? Well, get over it. Uh, I beat you to it. <laughs> I'm a I'm a little runner, and I love being faster than other people around me. Why don't we go back down to the library and finish reading this book? I didn't uh, feel much like playing music. I, after all that courtship, I'd fallen for a sister arachnopede. I should have uh, just eaten her uh, when she first came to me, but no. I had listened to her songs, and, and when she came back, suspended from a basket, uh, I considered <laughs> eating her, and, and she played a happy song, and the music repeated from her magic box. Uh, I ventured closer. The ray of light from her eyes swept over the webs below until she found me. I interrupted her echo box, striking the web as, as hard as I could to drown out her notes. Females aren't supposed to share a cave once they're ready for mating, I said. My mother told me sisters will kill each other for finding for a mate for food. Uh, if, if a male comes, I'll be forced to kill you for him. I'm not going to compete for a meal for your food. Now I have a mate and a food of my own at home. Besides, uh, I wasn't going to stay long. I can go if you wish. Her internal beat was slow. Uh, sad rhythm. Uh, she returned her miniature web uh, to her back and, and started to pull herself up. Uh, my uh, petty palps spasmed in unexpected regret. I waved my front leg at her. Uh, if you're here, you might as well stay and... Uh, and play some some music. Uh, sing me a song about your mate. Uh, does he stay home like a like a female while you go out and roam and hunt like a nomadic male? Well, she chitted and took out her miniature web, uh, playing slowly. Sometimes I roam so I can learn more about this uh, planet. <laughs> I tend to fuzzy. I had for some reason the word planet just made me stop, and I had to think for a while. And then I reflected on my own life, and then I saw the infinity of all time. 
but I said the word. Now let's move on. Uh, I tend the fuzzy pillars and cow worms outside in the meadow and study the animals. I play music when I'm alone. My mate uh, rocks inside. Well, he's not exactly my mate, but he will be soon. <laughs> I couldn't tell if she wanted a mate or not. She and I were so much alike. Why do you sing uh, while you're alone? Uh, would you catch your mate more quickly if you played to him as you do for me? Well, I play for him sometimes, but he isn't like me. He doesn't know how to play songs. Music doesn't have the same meaning for him. Besides, that isn't how courtship works for my kind. Yet, that was how she worked. There, there could be no love without music. Oh, how I pitied her. But I have you, she said, a friend. We make beautiful music together. And by the way, some of these words are misspelled on purpose, and I think that's the reason why I freaked out earlier, because it, uh, it, it, it's slightly different, but also kind of the same. Uh, and so I'll keep reading, but if I say something weird, it's because the author wrote it weird. It's not my fault. Oh, I was too interested in the strangeness of this story to correct her mispronunciation. See, that's exactly what I was talking about. I already pointed that out to you. Uh, what are your kind? What tribe of arachnopede has males uh, that don't play music? Oh, I'm not. I'm human. Uh, that word didn't mean anything to me. Uh, maybe she was a ground walker. I wanted to tell her I would be there for her forever. I would appreciate her music if her mate was uh, too dense to do so, but I couldn't make myself tell her these things when I knew she didn't want me. All my notes came out sharp and quick, masking my longing and sorrow. What, what, what happened to you? Why do you only have four legs? Did someone bite off your other legs? I asked. Is that what happened to you? She asked. I shook myself to show my displeasure at what, she, uh, what she'd asked. Uh, uh, this is enough singing for the day. Uh, if you don't leave now, I'll be tempted to make a meal out of you. I wouldn't, but Sophia didn't know that. When she came, uh, next came, I asked her if uh, she had laid any eggs with her mate. Uh, no humans don't lay eggs. Uh, have you laid any eggs? I ignored her question. Hey, what's wrong with your male? Why hasn't he made it with you yet? If he isn't uh, going to mate with you, oh, you better be careful. He's probably going to eat you. Check to see if he still has two uh, penny palps. If he doesn't, oh, he won't be uh, able to mate, and you might as well eat him before he eats you. Nah, uh, uh, humans uh, don't eat each other, she tried to repeat the word I had said. Uh, penny palp? I corrected her and showed her my penny palps outside my jaws for grabbing, and she didn't have any. Oh, I wondered if her upper legs were actually petty palps, but if that was true, she uh, only had one pair of legs, and that was too much for my brain to fathom. Uh, what do what petty palps have to do with anything, she asked. Oh, aphid droppings. No wonder she had laid any eggs. Perhaps her mother hadn't taught her how to, to, how to mate before she died. Oh, I decided it was time to have a talk about the petty palps. Oh, uh, and, and the eggs. Well, she listened with the same rapt attention as I told her how a male transferred his seed uh, to his petty palps and transferred this into his intended, uh, and I explained how dangerous it was because of how close petty palps were to fangs. Love and hunger could be easily confused. Sometimes uh, the petty palp breaks off during mating and the male runs away, I explained. My mama said they always run away in the end, though, in my heart filled with loneliness at the thought. I could, I could see why Mama had liked having hatchlings to sing the hours away with. I watched hatchlings of my own. I just didn't know if I was willing to let a male get that close to me. I had let Sophia get that close. But that was, uh, it was different. Uh, she was different. How many males have you mated with, she asked. I repeated the question to her, the notes coming out harsh and rushed. Oh, she shrugged. One, just my mate. Uh, but we aren't actually mated yet, in your sense of the word. Uh, not officially, anyways. Uh, the thing, uh, it's more misspellings. I'm just letting you know, if I say something weird, it's intentional misspellings by the author. The thing is, humans don't uh, talk about matching to each other. 
It is rude to ask you how many males have you mated with. I twitched and recovered from my embarrassment by adding another note to cover my stammer. Mothers must tell their daughters, but sisters would never speak of this, nor do we speak of anything with each other after we leave home. I will pretend we are mother and daughter. Uh, uh, the truth is, I have no mates. I drive all males away if they come to me. I'm always, uh, well, sorry afterward, though. Uh, I, I want a mate to fertilize my eggs. It's just that I don't want one to, to, to eat me like the one that pretended to want, uh, he wanted to mate with my mother. The notes of her song were reassuring and calm. Uh, 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 what happened? I hesitated. My stomach's quivered inside. <laughs> I like the idea of multiple stomachs. Oh, my stomach's quivered inside, and I don't like the way I felt. Like my belly was exposed, even though it was protected below me. I, I didn't think I could answer her. Not yet. Instead, I said, uh, yeah, uh, you can't be female. Uh, why was your music so sad and sweet when you first began to court me? Uh, if it wasn't because you, you, you were so lonely. Oh, not this song again. I repeated myself till Sophia uh, answered. Uh, my mother died shortly before we met. My songs were sad because I was sad. Uh, we used to play music together, and she was my first teacher. And I, uh, I, I felt lost without her. Feeling the vulnerability in her own words, it reassured me I could share mine. Uh, my mother died too, I said. She was my teacher too, and I watched her die in front of me as I was molting. Uh, molting? I taught her the word, and she showed her, her whatever husks I'd shed below. Even though she could say it, I wondered if she understood. I shared the bitter details of my mother's death, my, my molting with my sister, uh, the male who came and ate her and my sister, and how, she, how he tried to eat me uh, but gave up. She studied my amputated limbs as I explained how I lost them. Uh, she didn't explain how she had lost hers. It, 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 it felt too personal to ask. Uh, I never wanted to mate again uh, until you came to me with, uh, with, with your music, I sang. But you aren't male, and I'm uh, worse off than before because I can't imagine loving any male's music as much as I, as I love yours. Nah, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to deceive you, Sophia said. She strummed nonsense words on her miniature web. It's just as well. I, I thought you were a male. It, it kept me from eating you. Now, she chittered and clapped her upper legs together in the way she did when she was amused. Uh, apparently, she thought this is a joke. Uh, it wasn't a surprise I should need to molt again, not when I had so much energy to sing and attract tasty meals. I, I, at first, I felt bloated under my exoskeleton. My legs ached and my thorax felt uh, uh, too tight. I rubbed my abdomen up against the wall of the cavern to try and relieve the itch, but it only made it worse. My appetite disappeared like last time. Days later... The first cramps in my legs came as I played music with Sophia, making me twitch and strike the, the wrong note. Uh, it would be long now. Uh, 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 what is it? She asked. Uh, nothing. I wasn't about to show weakness in front of my new sister. I should finish her songs. And when, the, uh, anyway, when she left, I planned to seal up the entrance so she couldn't come back until I was done molting. I ignored the burning in my legs and played on. Uh, most days, Sophia's musical company ended uh, too soon, and the remaining hours of the day dragged on. Uh, today was uh, pain clenched me around my middle. I found the opposite was true. I kicked out my legs, creating twangs of uh, discordant notes that interrupted her song. Hey, what's wrong? Uh, she asked. You must go, I said abruptly. It was an effort to dance across the web to reach the notes to play music. Uh, uh, is something the matter? Uh, have I done something wrong? Oh, I didn't want to tell her. The truth made me feel as vulnerable as exposing my underside for her to stab with her fangs. Yet at the same time, it felt right to tell her, I must molt. Leave me. So I have time to seal up my web to keep predators out. Sophia packed up her miniature web and pulled herself up. Uh, her ropes 
to the outside world. Did she always move so slowly? Ah, the movement was out, and I climbed up the opening and covered it with a weaving of silk. I would have liked to secure the hole better, but I didn't have time, nor the energy. It exhausted me to do so much weaving, and I had to stop several times to keep my balance on my web. Uh, seizures racked my body at, at, at their frequency, coming out without warning and leaving my limbs shaking and uncoordinated. I wobbled down the web to the lowest reaches, uh, tore a hole near the bottom section, and lowered myself below. Uh, I placed two of the strands before I collapsed onto an antivore husk. My body spasmed out of control. The worst pain was in the third row of legs, the ones partially amputated. Oh, I curled my legs toward my body to, to, to lessen the cramps, and then relaxed as the spasm passed. Another wave of fire lanced through my abdomen and now my limbs, and I curled my legs inward. Oh, the spasm repeated again and again, my outer shell loosening uh, more with each shrug. Uh, the light of the sun faded, and the cavern fell into darkness. More than anything, I wanted to rest. But I, but I labored to push away my old exoskeleton. Night passed into day. I managed to work my head free of my shell, as, as well as my one leg. Uh, I was so involved in my task that I didn't notice the music right away. Oh, it was slow. Oh, a sensual serenade. My insides clenched, not unpleasantly. At first, I thought it was, uh, I, it was Sophia. Though this song lacked her, her childish wording and the cadence I'd grown accustomed to, my twelve eyes fixed on the metallic blue of an abdomen above my head. His petty palp shimmered and glowed in a way that filled me with desire. Fangs sawed at the silk cords nearest my head. Uh, far above, light spilled down from the entrance. The clump of wedding uh, hung in shreds to the side. I had been too hasty in my attempt to seal it. If I had uh, hurried Sophia out sooner, I might have had more time to ensure my safety. But as it was, a male, a male, was now inside my lair. And not just any male. Love me, love me, love me, he said. Oh, I recognized the purple and blue shine to his abdomen. I had once heard this battle before, the song that had lured my mother to her death. Oh, he saw it at the web above me, and cold dread settled in the pit of my stomachs. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still infatuated with the multiple stomachs. This moment was everything I had feared. He'd come back for me. Yeah, he's larger than he's been before. I would have been, oh, because he's middle-aged now. So he's got a little bit of weight to him. I get it. I'm the same way. I understand. It's like me going after people I dated in high school. He was larger than he'd been before. I wouldn't put it past him to have molted twice since we'd last met. It was a feat he had fit through the entrance. Love me, love me, love me, he played. I've come back for you. Love me, love me, love me. You know my love is true. I had once thought his song, eh, beautiful. But now I could see how simple it was compared to what Sophia and I had shared. Even if what we had was only sisterly love. My body seized and my legs curled inward. I was trapped in the throes of molting, unable to stop. He sawed through the web, stopping occasionally to play music. Uh, the molting would only take another day, at least. He had grown tired of waiting uh, last time. Uh, perhaps he would again. But he hadn't been as big and strong this time. He didn't have uh, two other meals to eat first and fill up on. He watched with eight hungry eyes. One of the silk cords he saw it snapped, and he had tried to thrust his head between the lines of the web, but the hole was still too small. Venom glistened on his fangs. Oh, he returned to sawing. My last memory of Mama and my sister flashed before my eyes. I, I would be eaten as they had. I would never know what it was to have a mate. I didn't want my only purpose in life to be some scheming male's meal. Uh, the sun set and, the, uh, and rose again. Uh, he sawed through another three threads in that time, and I was helpless to stop him. I managed to wiggle more of my abdomen out of the empty shell, but my thorax was still inside. Uh, if I had the use of all my legs, uh, I could have kicked him into the web and spun my silk around him. I would have sunk my fangs into him and not the other way around. 
The hole was large enough for him to fit his head through now, and he uh, could have fit the rest of himself if he had been smart enough to push his legs through first. Uh, but his legs got tangled, and he had to use his uh, saliva to unstick himself. He maneuvered one leg through, uh, and then the other. Uh, he batted at my legs and missed. His claws pinched open and closed as he pushed against the web, uh, web to grasp at me. Uh, he came close enough to brush me. He sawed more frantically. Love me, love me, love me. No morsel is more delicious than you. And he stopped when the new song started up. Uh, Madalena below and Sophia above. Making web music to show their love. Sophia flashed her headlight back and forth, searching for me. Uh, the male turned and watched her descend on her uh, double line. I struggled against the confines of my own body, but I couldn't reach the web to play a song to warn her. I, I tried to use my voice to sing, but it, uh, it, was, it was hoarse uh, and raspy from molting. I doubted I sang loud enough uh, for even the male to hear it. This was going to be just like... Uh, uh, Claria and uh, Mama. Another sister would die, and there was nothing I could do about it. Uh, the male twanged a few notes, his eyes riveted on Sophia. My tender pet, I will surely bet I'll catch you yet in my net, juicy, juicy, yummy, yummy. Surely his insipid song would give him away. Would I ever say such a thing to her? She acted completely oblivious. Sophia swung her light down to the web and still not seeing us, she descended in her basket. The male retreated away from me and toward her. No, I cried. Go away, Sophia. But my voice was hoarse, uh, was a hoarse whisper. I still couldn't reach the web to communicate like I usually would have. Uh, I screeched and wiggled. Another spasm caught my body and, and, and made me curl into myself. Sophia's light fell on me then, and she noticed the male creeping toward her. She dropped her miniature web, and it fell through the web. Oh, she dropped her miniature web. It fell through the web. Okay, I didn't read that wrong. And crunched into the bodies of previous meals. The male crawled faster. Juicy, 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 he sang. <laughs> the way he flinched told me uh, she understood. Now her intestinal beat sped up. She lifted her upper limb. Blue light shot from something uh, she held in her claw. Uh, the male jerked back and screamed. The air smelled of burning hair. The male writhed and tumbled down the web almost to the bottom until he managed to grab onto a rope uh, to right himself. Sophia lifted herself higher on her web, but she must have forgot to watch for the sticky strands strung across the, along the way. Oh, she got caught and struggled to free herself. I ripped my second set of legs uh, from the molting shell and the pain so severe I went blind for a few seconds. The bright colors behind my eyes didn't stop me from stretching toward the nearest strands of web. Oh, I shook the web with my front legs, wanting to draw attention away from her. My love, oh, my love, my love, I played. The male ignored the entreaty and scuttled toward her. Sophia raised her arm again, and, and he leapt at her. More bright venom shot out from her claw. The male quivered, danced in the air before dropping right before her. His claws missed uh, their hold on the web, and his legs fell through the gaps. He landed on his abdomen and stuck to the web. He was close enough to Sophia to bat at her legs with his. Uh, one of his claws found purchase on her and clamped down. A shrill scream came out of her mouth in the highest note I had ever heard. He yanked on her, bringing her leg toward his fangs, and the tool that she held, making venom light, fell from her claw. I wrenched myself further out of my shell, and I couldn't uh, shed it. Uh, and all just yet, I dragged myself up the wall and crawled out the hole that he had created. I crawled across my web, struggling uh, to keep my, uh, my, my balance and, and carry the weight of my new body and the shell still attached. All my old legs caught against the sticky silk and I fought to free myself, but I was stuck. The male was strong enough to pull Sophia toward him. Oh, the glue on the web where she'd been caught held her. But the web stretched under the strain of him pulling. Her leg inched closer to his fangs, his petty palps opened and closed. 
Another spasm took hold of me, and I curled in on myself. As the seizure passed, I kicked at my old body uh, and yanked myself free. I sprang toward them. I landed just behind him and leapt onto his back. I sank my fangs into his body with a satisfying crunch. Uh, Sophia tried to speak, but she couldn't reach the right notes from where she was stuck in the web. Uh, her hand shook, and the notes uh, she made came out at uh, yeah, all wrong. Uh, she smelled of fear and blood. It took everything in me not to lick at the red stain trickling down her leg. I turned away and retreated down my web and into the crust of the old meals below where I found her web box. I gave it to her, uh, but she shook too much to grasp it and it fell from her claws again. Uh, I worried venom had gotten into her wound. I leaned in closer to smell her. Ah, uh, the sweet perfume of blood made my head dizzy and overpowered anything else I might have smelled. I jerked back uh, when I felt my own venom drip from my fangs. I lifted her in my petty palps. Holding her as far as I could from my fangs, I, I carried her to the entrance, but she trembled so badly she couldn't crawl out. I looped threads around my thorax and, uh, and stuck her to my back to carry her. Then I worked at the entrance with my front legs. Uh, my new flesh was soft and sensitive after molting. I didn't like the sensation of crusty earth touching my skin. I, I worked my legs so hard it felt as though my new hair would be rubbed off and my muscles would seize up, but I couldn't waste a moment to rest. I, I used my venom to soften the glue of the webbing that kept the entryway from crumbling and, and dug at it with my claws. The hole yawned wider as I worked. The brightness of the day burned my eyes. In a few more moments, the hole was big enough for me and Sophia to fit through. I, I stood outside, stunned and uncertain, and Sophia sang, using her mouth song, the notes discordant at first. Uh, then I, I recognized the words in, a, in her garble. Uh, I need you to take me, oh, the misspelling again, uh, home to my mate. Uh, he'll help me turn right and then go straight. I followed her directions. The world was so bright around me that I was blind after my life of uh, semi-darkness. I stumbled into something, making Sophia cry out. I righted myself and, uh, and started again. Long, slender blurs of green and purple loomed over me from the perfume of nectar. I, I knew them to be the stalks of flowers my prey nibbled on. My eyes seared from the light, and I wanted to turn away, but I, I kept going. I would take Sophia to her mate. Another right. Uh, straight, Sophia commanded. Confusing how to sing her words properly. I didn't correct her. I followed her commands until we cleared the flower forest and came to the wall. There was motion around me and dozens of screeches like uh, one would expect to hear from, uh, from, from prey. Sophia made screeches of her own at them and I feared this inelegant noise was her language. Humans didn't sound much more intelligent than uh, thrip mites or antivores. The creatures blurring around me smelled delicious, like Sophia, but different. When their discordant songs quieted, I heard thrumming inside them. Uh, fast and frantic, like Sophia, when she was anxious, she tapped her, her hand against my back, playing out a rhythm. It told me to be calm, and still, I didn't feel like being calm with all these little mites swarming around me. Uh, one of these creatures reached toward my back, and I batted it away with my leg. Sophia said, uh, they need to help me. I will, uh, beld to, oh, bleed to death. It's the, uh, awkward, or the weird spelling, because the spider's trying to understand her language. Uh, but yeah, B-E-E-L-D was, uh, took me a second, bleed to death. If you don't let them save me. It was an effort to muddle through her words and understand what she was saying. I shivered with revulsion as their stubby limbs stretched over my back and cut her from me. Oh, their clawed petty palps were pink like cow worms. I suppose she was too, but, but I had never thought of her uh, being disgusting. Her music had been too beautiful to think of her as anything else. The weight on my back lessened. Her hand was warm and reassuring as it stroked my back one last time. Then I was alone and blind. Thrip-like chitters and screeches of humans uh, came at intervals. Uh, there was 
uh, three who remained surrounding me, the thrumming of their eternal beats out of sync. I turned away from them and faced the wall. I curled my head under my body as much as I could to shut out the burning of the light. It was a vulnerable position, especially with my last set of legs gone and the second to last set impaired uh, stumps. As I flexed them, I realized they weren't the stubs they'd been before molting. My, my new legs were as long as those I possessed as a hatchling. Though they, uh, though they lacked claws, uh, they had grown in my molting. I hadn't noticed the change in my haste to help Sophia. My back limbs were still gone. Uh, the scent of the humans tickled in my nose and my stomach's cramped. I hadn't eaten in days and molting had given me even more of an appetite. I had fresh prey. Uh, in my web at home, only I couldn't see well enough to know my way home. I could smell my way into the flower forest, but I didn't think I could find the hole to my, uh, t uh, to my cavern. If I had been planning my return, I would have used my spinnerets to weave a rope from my home to Sophia so that I could find my way back, but it was too late for that now. The salty scent of the three tasty morsels near me, oh, made my belly cramp. Perhaps Sophia had intended for these humans to sacrifice themselves so that I might eat. Uh, uh, then again, she didn't eat prey. And if she didn't eat her mates, uh, it wasn't likely that she ate any of her other people either. Uh, it was unlikely she would want me to eat her kind, and, and I wondered where Sophia was and why she didn't return to tell me what I should do. Hunger was all I could think of. The scent of food was torture. I dug in the earth with my front legs to take my mind off the pain. And when the sky dimmed, the humans retreated. My last chance for a meal was also leaving. I forced myself to keep my fangs to myself. The sun slipped over the edge of the horizon and the pain in my eyes lessened. White spots danced before my eyes and I could see uh, better than I had in daylight. I wanted to uh, stay to see Sophia, but I also knew this wasn't my home. I, I had to get my web uh, uh, so I could grow strong. I spun a thread with my spinnerets as I ventured into the flower forest, sticking a line of web to rocks and the base flowers uh, in the hope that I'd be able to follow it back to find Sophia again after I was stronger. Twin moons rose in the sky surrounded by a thousand flickering bricks of light that reminded me of a dew on my web. A giant cow worm uh, erupted from the ground before me, and I was so hungry I considered what, it, what an incredible meal it would make. But as it unearthed more and more of itself, I realized that uh, it wouldn't take much for it to roll over and crush me. I retreated and went around it. Little white mites uh, the size of my claw tips fluttered through the air. Uh, they were smaller than the thrip mites that usually flew into my cavern. Uh, they smelled like a, like a mixture of fresh blood and pollen. I, I tried to loop my silk to catch one, but they dodged away. Oh, they were quick, and I set out after them, trying again and again. A moment later, I found what had made them swarm. A, a giant green fuzzy pillar squirmed on the ground. Oh, purple blood spilling out in a, uh, in a puddle. Uh, a hunched form loomed over the fuzzy pillar, hidden by the flailing body. Long, spindly legs fought to keep the green fuzzy pillar still. I approached cautiously, uh, wondering if I could get a bite. Of course, anything I bit, I had to wait hours until the insides liquefied. I counted eight legs from the predator hiding behind the larva. The predator's head lifted. It was a giant arachnopede. If it was a male, he was the biggest I'd ever seen. Ten eyes glowered at me, hungrily. He lifted himself higher. Uh, he was as tall as my cavern. Any admiration I might have for his beauty soured as he clapped his petty palps together ominously. The larva was still subdued to a lull by the venom. I backed away. The male climbed over his dinner, and the sharp odor of decay wafted toward me. His back legs worked a thread from his spinnerets. His joints bent, and he looked like uh, he was about to pounce aphid droppings. I was in trouble now. Blue light shot out from behind me. Sophia, I sang. Sparks flew from the abdomen of the giant arachnopede and smoke billowed out of his wound. He flung himself backward, toppling two flowers as he, as he writhed. Blue light shot out again and, and again, hitting the same steaming spot on his abdomen. The, the other arachnopede convulsed and ignored me now. Flowers swayed in the distance. I sniffed the air for Sophia, but I couldn't find her scent. 
There was another of her kind standing behind the base of a flower, watching me. The human's glowing eye fell on me, and I skittered to the side to keep from going blind. Another arachnopede pushed through the forest. It ignored the first thrashing arachnopede and fixed its ten eyes on me. Oh, he reached down for us, and the human shot more blue light from its petty pal, and I turned away from the light, my eyes burning anew. White spots danced across my vision and my head stabbed with pain as if the human had fired at me. But it hadn't. I wondered now if uh, all humans had the ability to make this venom uh, made of light, and if they did, why Sophia hadn't used it on me in the first time we met. The stampede of more arachnopedes thundered in the distance, and we had to get away from here. The scent of blood out in the open would call to them. The human patted my front leg, and I jerked back. It waved toward the two towering flowers and stepped into the shadows underneath. Noises came from the creature's mouth. Not, uh, eh, not quite a song, but close. Uh, the notes were low but garbled like Sophia when she had first come to me. Uh, this one, uh, this was one of Sophia's kind, so I knew it was too intelligent to be considered prey. Oh, but I was hungry. My insides felt like they would implode if I didn't eat. I should have felt kinship with this human because it had shot my enemies, but I didn't. Hunger erased all loyalty. The human smelled uh, warm and as sweet as pollen. With the breeze, I smelled Sophia again, or perhaps I just wanted to smell her. My life would have been so much simpler if I had eaten her the first time I met her. I worked a strand of silk out of my spinnerets and stretched it from my back legs to my front legs. The human was completely oblivious as I attached my silk to its back. Oh, I pushed more silk out and looped it around its middle. My prey fell over and thrashed around. The, the eye light moved from side to side, searching for me, but I dodged out of the way to avoid the blinding brightness. The human lifted an upper limb and shot out blue fire from something held in its claw. Uh, the shots went wild in the wrong direction. A flower above exploded in a burst of light, and in a quick uh, in a quick burst, I threw a line of silk to the human's claw and snatched away the instrument uh, for making blue fire. I tossed the venom light maker aside, and there was nothing that could stop me from eating the creature now. The drum inside the human thrummed in a simple one-two rhythm, speeding up as I approached. The, uh, the smell of warmth made venom ready itself inside me. I, I leaned closer. Uh, then he unleashed his secret weapon. Music! There was nothing that could have stopped me from eating a meal, save for one thing, Sophia's song. A burst of familiar music came from the creature. I recognized the pitch and the tone of Sophia's miniature web. If there was no web here, I, I, scanned, for the, I scanned the shadows... The music definitely came from the human I intended to eat. Sophia sang our song, but the words were different after the first stanza. She sounded tired, and there was a slight quiver that wasn't normally there. Malatina below, and Sophia above, assisted by Sophia's mate to show their thanks and love. Sophia's cared for, Sophia's home. And now it is time for Malatina, uh, Malatina, Malatina to go home. <laughs> Her meter was off and her rhythm was in her usual uh, pleasing artistry, but I would forgive her just this once. She was injured, after all. After I was able to muddle through her inferior song, I wondered how it was possible. She could send her music through a mate like this. It had to be some kind of mating magic. I looked over the human before me and he had four limbs and he did smell like her. Aphid droppings. This was her mate. I couldn't make a meal out of him. I unbound his bottom legs and then his torso, and he scrambled to his feet and retreated back. I pushed his light maker across the furry carpet that grew over the earth, and, and I was certain he, he wouldn't use it on me. But I had to trust Sophia had told him uh, not to eat me, her sister. Not that I'd been able to convince any males not to eat my sister. Uh, maybe I was making a mistake. He watched me warily for a long moment before backing away into the flower forest. I, I followed him to walk ahead of me, trusting this male about as much as he trusted me. He kept his light maker aimed ahead of him. No other arachnopedes encountered us along our way. He escorted me to my home, knowing the way better than I did. When we came to the hole in the earth that I knew was mine, I was so ravenous I considered pushing him inside. But I again thought of Sophia, and I allowed him to escape silently into the night. It was 
another day before my venom had liquefied the male arachnopede's muscle so that, uh, that I could uh, digest it. Uh, my skin toughened and grew less sensitive. After a few more days, I could have gone back to Sophia's people to try and find her, but, but what would I do when I reached them? Couldn't very well ask after her health. Uh, none of them understood me but her. I scared them, and in truth, they scared me. Between meals, I patched the gaping hole in the ceiling. I didn't want to attract more males or anything else that was large enough to eat me. Small males were, were bad enough, but I made sure the hole was still large enough for Sophia. She had said she was home and all right. But if that was so, why hadn't she returned to me? Perhaps it was because I tried to uh, eh, eat her mate. I grew so lonely as the days passed that I waded through an old crust of meals on the earthen floor until I found Sophia's miniature web. I imitated how she had held it and plucked the notes she had. The sound of her voice made me happy and, and sad at the same time. My songs returned to the melancholy they once had been when I had been alone without sisters or mother to keep me company. I, I didn't know how other arachnopedes did it. Mama had always said we were solitary creatures, that sisters were dangerous. We would compete for mates and food. Sophia and I uh, had never competed for anything. Oh, she had kept me company and shared her music with me, and she had never uh, tried to eat me like a mate would have. Uh, long ago, Mama had told my sisters and, and me stories of her first and, and second mates. Their companionship had been brief, and her own loneliness had abated when her children hatched. My time with Sophia had been far longer than it would have been with any mate. Uh, she had saved me from the mail while I had been molting and sacrificed herself for me. Uh, she had sent her mate to help me, and now that I was well-fed enough to be rational, I felt miserable. I'd repaid her friendship by trying to eat her mate. I strummed on my web listlessly. My music was hardly enough to entice insects, let alone a companion. An echo from above mirrored the sorrow of my songs, and I looked up to find a dark shape blocking the light from the door. Eight legs extending out from the body. Two glowing eyes shifted over the walls in search of me. The illusion lasted about a moment before I realized it was, uh, it was two figures. Uh, the silhouettes overlapping and making the four legs each possessed look like they had been combined. Sophia chittered and used her mouth music as she lowered herself down into my cave. Oh, her mate descended a moment later. Sophia's scent was off. A sharp, pungent odor accompanied her usual salty sweetness, and as she neared, the odor intensified. It came from her lower left limb. It didn't look the, the same as the other. Uh, it was metallic and, and shaped differently. My sister, my sister, my sister, I sang. How happy I am to see you again. I waved a hand at her mate, who lowered himself with the same pulley system as she did. Er, uh, and your mate too. Ah, she chittered and repeated my lyrics several times, and then she turned to her mate and used her nonsense tongue with him. Uh, he hung suspended in the air beside her, and he flinched and lifted the venom light marker maker in his claw when I approached to hand Sophia her miniature web. Her mouth music turned screechy, and she waved her arms at him. He lowered the little venom tool to his leg. Uh, whatever she had said hadn't made him feel any better. He watched me warily, and I moved more slowly as I handed Sophia her miniature web. I, I stroked uh, her head with my front leg, too overcome with happiness to stay back. Her mate shifted uncomfortably. Wasn't that just like a male, eh, eh, to be jealous? I pointed at her foot. She leaned forward and tugged at the lower part of her limb. Her lower leg slid away with far more ease than mine did when, when, uh, when molting. Uh, the leg below was black. Uh, below the black casing was pink like the rest of her cowworm colored flesh, except for the dark red tip where there should have been uh, clawed pincers. Oh, she removed the black exoskeleton of her other claw, and the second was noticeably longer with stubby claws that looked uh, ineffective for grabbing. Uh, still, they were better than the leg that, uh, that didn't have any claws. I understood what had happened. The male had torn off part of her leg. Uh, just as, she, as he had done to me. Oh, a shrill note escaped from my chiselery. <laughs> I danced back and forth to reach the correct notes, and it was easier moving across my web than it had been before molting. Such sorrow throbs in my heart that you should feel the same pain as I. You know what it is to be incomplete. You too almost came to die. 
She repeated my melody, adding her own words and stumbling over a few. Uh, we are sisters in our hearts. We will continue to be strong. I have uh, brought a gift for you, and I hope that that is not wrong. She looked to her mate and uh, said something to him. He removed part of his back and reached inside as he went on. I've studied your people. I've learned their ways. And with my mate's help, we've collected from a male all that you crave. Her mate removed a pillow of silk thread, resting on top of what would look to be a, a male petty palp. The tip was covered in a glossy black fluid. My heart felt heavy. A petty palp to fertilize me wasn't all that I craved. I wanted a mate to court me with a song. I wanted to love and companionship like she had with her mate. After all we'd gone through, I didn't know how she could still not know this. I, I played high, happy notes to disguise my sorrow. Oh, thank you uh, for the pain you have gone to on my behalf. Just don't try to eat my mate afterwards, Sophia chittered in the way that she did when she thought something was funny. If anything gets to eat him, someday it'll be me. There would be no more mate-eating in my cave if I had anything to say about it. Oh, her mate waited in silence, unable to speak, and unable to, uh, unable to understand. Well, while she continued to play her miniature web, oh, she serenaded me and only me. Perhaps she did comprehend what I needed. Music was love, and love was music. I, too, understood her heart's desires, and I suspected I could fulfill the ones that she couldn't. Pride filled me. My chest felt tight as though I were in need of another molting. I gave Sophia a song of friendship and, and, and love. Mama had been right about imposter males. They would trap you, but not just with their silk cords. I would forever be ensnared by Sophia's music, yet I didn't mind so long as I could offer her my own in exchange. Well, now that we've retired to the smoking room, we can review what we've read and see what we've learned. Uh, it's a story where I can't pronounce the name of the main spider, apparently. I think I was going through a bunch of different pronunciations of that, so I'm sure that's disturbing uh, for you, the listener, but I can't help myself. I'm not an educated man. Uh, we learn that a spider who is living happily with his mother and his sister... Uh, has this world turned upside down when a male spider, a mate, comes in, being all smooth, acting like Justin Bieber, singing songs to make those young spider women get all excited, and then kills the mother, and then kills the sister, and, uh, you know, the main spider gets away. After that, lives kind of a solitary life, kind of lonely, but never trusting anyone, until a tiny little human comes down with a, what I imagine is a guitar, or maybe a harp. Uh, and then plays songs and learns how to speak the spider's language through the, the, the language of music. And, uh, and they get to be friends, and the spider is like, okay, you're my mate. Oh, wait, you're, you're not going to be my mate. You've already got a mate. Ah, crap. And then the hideous male spider comes back and almost kills the human, and there's a, a fight ensues after a molting. And, uh, and then eventually the spider takes the human back to its camp and uh, almost kills uh, that human's mate. Eh, but it gets back. And in the end, uh, you know, after killing more male spiders and all sorts of stuff, a lot of high action, then suddenly the humans come back saying, well, you want to get artificially inseminated? Here's a, here's a whatever, a petty palp. Let's get to work. Which isn't exactly what it wants, but uh, it's good enough. Plus, you got human friends for life, so you can't beat that. Uh, what's good about this? Well, that the spider uh, eventually uh, found some form of happiness, even though it's not idyllic. Uh, maybe that's just kind of the way the world works in reality. Kind of a reflection on how all of us have to kind of settle sometimes for, for good enough. Uh, what sucks? I don't know that the human got mangled uh, and that the spider didn't actually get the mate that it wants. But in this story, it doesn't seem like there are any mates that don't want to kill you. So maybe it's probably for the best. Maybe that doesn't suck. What do we learn? You can't trust anybody, especially if you're lonely. Uh, I've learned that lesson, and that's why I'm single to this day. So if anything, this book only reinforces the fact that I will never date again. 
forever. Well, with that, thanks for listening, and uh, tune in, I believe, next week, as I will read the last in in this collection of short stories, uh, because Ben has decided to wait a couple weeks till we finish the uh, last Twilight book. So that kind of screwed up my entire schedule, but fine, whatever. Uh, So thanks again, and I'll see you later. And maybe if I shower, I can get this uh, feeling of wasps off me. Ah, uh, well, it appears you found me in the part of the podcast I hate the most where I tell you all about the places on the internet where you can find me. You can tell I hate this because of the sound effects making it sound like a stormy night uh, in the drawing room of the damned. Now, there's there's that. Uh, I, I, are you cool? I like cool people. It's the reason why I got involved in this business to begin with, just to meet cool people. Not losers. So if you're cool, uh, feel free to go over to my website, uh, nuzzlehouse.com. You can see a backlog of everything I've ever read, uh, along with episodes from Book Boys and uh, blah, blah, blah. You can also find me on Instagram, uh, which is a uh, House Nuzzle. And conveniently enough, uh, Twitter, which is also at House Nuzzle. Annoyingly, YouTube made me pick a name instead of just a house nuzzle. So you got Glenn Nuzzles. So I guess you search for that if you want to watch a screen that doesn't do anything and just hear my voice. Uh, and since, uh, since I think you might be cool, you can always just email me directly. Glenn.nuzzles at gmail.com But don't, uh, don't email if you're a, a nerdlinger or a dork. Now, back to business. I can't believe I drank all of them already. There's got to be one left.